Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys in a Ride. Ride. Today we're going to take a look at this 2020 Kia Soul, and this is the S trim. We're going to take you for a view and a, a review of the outside, talk about its trim levels, talk about its design, talk about the engine, its horsepower, and as always, Nathan's going to take you on a tour of the inside and talk to you about its features and technology. So come on, let's go for a ride. We'd like to thank our friends at Kia of Mankato for loaning us the sporty Kia Soul for our review today. There are six trim levels starting with the LX that starts at 17,490, the S trim that starts at 20,290, the GT trim that also starts at 20,290, the X line that starts at 21,490, the EX line that starts at uh, 22,690, and the GT line turbo that starts at 27,490. Now, the GT Line Turbo is powered by a 1.6 liter dual overhead cam 16 valve engine uh, that is a four cylinder producing 201 horsepower and 195 pound foot of torque. All the others have a two liter dual overhead cam 16 valve four cylinder producing 147 horsepower and 132 pound foot of torque. Uh, there's a six speed transmission with the GT Line Turbo putting out fuel mileage of 25 city, 31 highway, and 27 combined. And there's a uh, intelligent variable transmission available uh, as well with a 27 city, 33 highway, 30 combined. Uh, the GT line turbo does have a seven speed dual clutch transmission, 27 city, 32 highway, and 29 combined. Now on the front end, you see the multi-focus reflector headlights. Uh, there, is also, there are also projector beam headlights or LED headlights and LED fog lights on the uh, GT Line Turbo. Now on the higher trims, there are the mirror-mounted LED turn indicators. And on uh, all vehicles, there's the four-wheel disc with anti-lock brakes. Uh, either 11 or 12 inch ventilated front rotors and 10.3 or 11.2 uh, solid brake rotors. You do have McPherson, McPherson front struts and a rear coupled torsion beam axle. Now there are 16 inch to 18 inch wheels running with uh, 205-60R16 tires up to 235-45R18 tires. Here's a shot of that uh, double overhead cam, 16 valve, four cylinder engine, putting out 147 horsepower in this trim level. You know, I have to say for uh, most engines and cars nowadays, you can't see through but to the ground, but you really do have a lot of space uh, to do, perform maintenance. I've always liked the friendly, happy demeanor and styling of this vehicle, and I think they've done a very good job in its modest refresh and restyle. Love the way they've changed the rear tail lights that loop up over top now and include the rear mounted uh, brake light in with them. The one thing I do miss is where you see the reflector here on the bumper. They used to be round, like big round spotlights, and I think that just kind of added to the quirky cuteness of the vehicle. I wish they would have retained that, but overall it's a good clean design and a nice refresh. Now the curb weight on this vehicle ranges anywhere from uh, 2,802 pounds up to 3,036 pounds. Its turning circle is 34.8 feet. Rides on a wheelbase of 102.4 inches. Its overall length is 165.2 inches. The width is 70.9 inches. The height is 63 inches. The ground clearance is 6.7 inches. It does have a heated rear glass, rear wiper washer, uh, rear uh, privacy glass, a locking fuel filler door. I do like the styling on the wheels. Now, you know, it's cute quirkiness has kind of changed a little bit. Before it had a happy, friendly face. Now it's got quite a bit more of a menacing face on it. But uh, it works, it works really well. I like the grid pattern. 
in the uh, large open grill. And you see now the uh, headlights are down below where they used to be up top and they were much larger and more round. I like the trim piece that carries along right here on the piano black with the chrome strip in the middle. Very nicely done, very well restyled. I like the uh, overall look of the vehicle. Still remains its cuteness, but it gives it a little bit more uh, toughness with that menacing look on the front grill. So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the styling. I really do like the line, the hip line here. I like the flared wheel arches, and I definitely like the floating roof design with the sole name in there, and it's actually a little textured inside. That's kind of cool. It's not just uh, cut out into the plastic. It's nicely textured. And then you've got this nice detail that's uh, mimicking the front grille. Here we are on the inside of the redesigned 2020 Kia Soul. We have standard door controls right here. We have a nice pocket down here for storage. We do we have kind of a nice grip right here? There's a hand fingers through hole right there. I like that for grabbing the door. One thing to note right here on this one is you've got a sort of an infinite adjusting seat here. If you crank this up, the seat actually moves up. And if you crank it down, the seat moves down. So you just get infinite position possibilities for raising or lowering the seat which makes it really easy to enter the car and be able just to sit right down in the seat without feeling you're going to sink too far you got nice bolstering on the sides here uh, these are cloth seats you got nice bolstering on this uh, back edge too and then you have a reclining lever to put the back of the seat back all right down here we have couple of buttons. We've got um, our dashboard lights to uh, brighten or dim them. Over here we have lane keeping assist. Now this is going to do sort of two things when we turn it on uh, and then you can access some of the features through your driver's information center which I'll show you. But basically this helps to keep your car centered between your lanes. It uses a set of sensors and cameras to read the road ahead of you. Um, and helps you, warns you if you're straying over your line. Uh, it, it has another feature, and this is the one that's found in your driver's information center, that uh, also allows you uh, to set a lane departure warning, or if it sets senses that you're leaving the road, then it will also warn you. This is a blind spot monitoring, and that is when a car is next to you, you're going to see this little symbol in your mirror. Right where the cars are, a little light will come on, and there's one in both mirrors. So if someone's next to you, it's it's going to uh, give you a little visual warning. Okay, over here then we have, this is the um, a button that if you turn it on, it will shut off the engine when you're stopped. And like I say, a, a stoplight or a stop sign, and then as soon as you accelerate, it'll turn the engine back on. It's a gas saving feature. This one over here, of course, is your traction control, which helps to keep your, your, your car from slipping in, uh, in rain or slippery weather like snow or, or ice. It's, it's not an all-wheel drive or a four-wheel drive by any means, but traction control is really nice to help keep your car uh, going straight down the road on slippery surfaces. Uh, over here, we've got telephone control. We've got some voice commands we can do through the car. Uh, we've got a mode selector button for the stereo. Uh, we've got volume up and down, and then we have a, some selector buttons. Over here on the right is basically our cruise control, and we can set it, we can cancel it. There's a set button right there, we can resume. And then uh, over here, you've got the button that accesses your driver's information center. Okay. And then this button will this button will toggle through the different choices and uh, we'll go over that more in another video but that's where those controls are over here you have a very nice seven inch display screen and you do have uh, physical controls where you can access your radio and your media your seeking your track you can go to your home screen right here you can go to your phone Hey, um, oh, I didn't have that connected yet. Favorite, you can create some favorite things that when you hit this button, certain things will show up in your screen. And then you have a setup button. Here you've got a volume, a manual power on and volume control. 
as well as a, as a seek and scan in your radio function right here. I should also mention right here, you do have a manual tilt and telescoping steering wheel. So it'll go up and down. It will also telescope in and out. Over here, you've got auto lights. There is a setting, if I can show it to you. Right there, if you turn it to auto. There we go, there's auto. It'll come on automatically, or you can turn them on to your parking lights, or all the way on, or all the way off down here. Turn signals over here, and then you've got controls for your windshield wipers, front and rear, including the sprays for them on this side. Climate control, we've got manual climate control down here in various different trim levels. You can opt for uh, automatic climate control. Down here, you have your gas cover release button. And then you have your hood release right underneath here. And you have a fuse panel access right here. Moving down below that, we've got a very nice little storage area with sort of a, a, a nice rubber pad in here so things don't slide. You have two 180 watt 12 volt plugins, as well as a USB port that will charge your phone and also connect you for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to the infotainment system. All right, over here, you've got uh, your shifter here. You've got the lock lockout button right here. And if I take and shift down to drive, okay, you're going to notice, and I'll focus in on it a little bit here, that if I pop the, the shifter over to my left, that I now have a sport mode and I can shift manually. You do have two drive modes in here. And if I press that, and you watch the driver's information center, you can have sport or normal. All right, down here in the middle, we have two cup holders. You have a physical uh, emergency brake. And then we have a center armrest. And then underneath that is some additional storage. Okay. Over here, you've got your glove compartment, okay, which is ample sized. Now, over here on the passenger side, you do have the, the manual recline lever right here. And you do have the same storage pocket on the door and the same nice grab handle. You do also have a manually sliding forward and back button that's a uh, lever. All right, let's take a look at the back. On the back of the 2020 Kia Soul, bottle, you have a bottle storage in the door. Nice deep grab handle for closing the door. All right, and then you have the same nice bolstered seats on the back and the and the bottom of the seat okay this is a 60 40 split folding seat here and if I sit in the back for a compact car I'm five foot eleven and a half how much space I have now I'm in the behind the passenger seat but that's actually further back than the driver's seat I was sitting in which was adjusted so um, I still have several inches uh, like two inches of legroom and, and Kia has kind of done the same thing we see on some other cars where they've molded the back of the seat to give you more legroom but even here where it sticks out I can still get my fingers in between here so very spacious okay so so in the 2020 Kia Soul, uh, there is increased cargo space. And obviously the room had to come from somewhere. So the, the changes in measurements between the, between the 2020 Kia Soul and the 2019 is that there, there's actually 0.2 inches increased legroom in the front, but there is 0.2 less inches of headroom in the front and 0.3 inches of less rear legroom, okay? So all that to give you a, a la very large cargo area, uh, quite a bit larger than last year's model. And again, I showed you on my f on my legs, and I'm sitting behind a seat that's pushed back farther than where I than I was in the driver's seat, and I still had inches of legroom. Okay, and you can see there's plenty of headroom. Uh, well, so the sacrifices made were just tiny. And if you step into the 2020 Kia Soul, you, you're, you're not going to notice like, oh, wow, I have a lot less legroom. No, it's, it's plenty of room in here. Uh, Kia's done a really nice job of, of increasing the cargo space while really taking absolutely nothing away from the consumer. 
Uh, down at the bottom here, the back of the console is plain. There are the air vents are all underneath the seat. In other trim levels, you can opt for some additional USB plugins. Up here, you do have uh, you do have a rear dome light along with grab handles. Uh, but there are no seat back pockets on either side of on this trim level, but on different trim levels you can get a passenger side seat pocket. Okay, so here we are taking a ride in the new uh, in the new <laughs> the 2020 Kia Soul. Yes, that <laughs> that I can't say this morning. <laughs> Newly redesigned because I've eaten peanut butter. <laughs> One thing I will say is the motor is very peppy. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot in the accelerator and, and you're up and going. I did just use the Apple CarPlay a little bit ago uh, with uh, Apple Maps navigation, it worked beautiful. The steering is tight. Well, you know, I think the overall demeanor of this vehicle is that it's uh, just, it's a sporty, zippy little car. That um, it is. It's got you know it's a box on wheels is kind of what it looks like but when you're inside you appreciate all that room it's got a lot of uh, utility here the seats are comfortable i like the bolsters on the sides yeah they're not and, and the really seat kind of comfortable yep. i'm surprised and it's got a lot of uh thigh support on the bottom seat you yes know, a lot of the a lot of new cars uh, that bottom seat will be a little shorter to kind of give you more leg room they say or more overall yep. room it's it's open but here you've got a bigger bottom seat that gives you more thigh support. Overall, though, it, it's fairly quiet. I mean, I'm not raising my voice to have a conversation with you. No. You do have um, some hard touch plastics over here by the, on the um, door handle, door area, uh, where you rest mm -hmm. your arm, right around the window and lock switches. But that's typical, uh, most any other car. Especially in a compact car. Yeah. Um, you have a lot of nice features. Uh, I was sitting in the, in the back and we we're talking about leg room and, and head room. And um, I, even though Kia has taken a minute amount of things away, as far as uh, head room and, and stuff goes, it, it's so roomy. Right. I mean, there's just, yeah, no complaints about head room or shoulder room or width room or. Um, okay, there we are, floor. There we go. Up a hill. There yeah. we are. Wow. That's a pretty good pickup. Yeah. It is. And and if you're at it like a, driving slower, like below 30, it's very peppy. Right. It's pretty well composed, too. It's soft. You know, you've got the little bump strips in the road that, you're, that we're hitting, uh, but it's not really rattling and shaking. You don't hear any squeaks and rattles. It's very well composed. Yeah. Nope. I don't hear any anything that I wouldn't expect. You know, in terms of just road noise. Right. Cereal's got a nice feel to it. It's got the little bulges on the top uh, upper part that I like. You know, a little thumb grip there. All right, so we're going to uh, pull over here in a second here. We're going to switch drivers. Oh. Yep. That is a little it, punchy. I like it that. Is, it is. I like it. You know, the armrest back here, just simple things, but the armrest is big enough for both you oh. and the driver to comfortably put your arms on there. I do like the steering wheel. It's nice. Okay. It's thick enough and padded. It falls right to hand. It's really nice. you got all your uh, uh, mode selects on one side, your cruise control and cancel and other things. Your phone yep. is on the left side to answer that, to pair it. Yeah, basically it. your phone and your stereo are all on the left side and then your driver's information system and cruise are on the right. He has made it very simple to go through the menus and, and uh, make your settings. Boy, this is just super maneuverable. Wow, this is... <laughs> I like it. it. It's, it's zippy. That's 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 what how I would describe it. Wow, <laughs> it is. Now, now, the, now you know we're on the highway. Punch it. Wow, holy cow! The shifting is very smooth. Yeah, it almost it is. imperceptible. Wow, you know uh, we're out on the highway, but it would be just like really so much fun to take um, in a city. And see what it's like in the city because yeah. um, 
it, it's just so maneuverable and so zippy. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna try this lane keeping and see what it does. <laughs> it, it's very active. It's fighting me a little bit when mm -hmm. I kept persisting, and then it told me it yelled at me with a little uh, bleep, bleep, bleep. right. <laughs> I know, and I don't know if you picked that in the cameras, but it did do an audible warning. I and just did, did. That's why I did it. Oh, that's why I went bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> that that is audible warning. There was one from the car too. <laughs> Here, we'll see if we can get it again. There, you, there you go. So you, you get over toward the line and it tries to nudge you back. And if you continue to go over, uh, that's when that, that uh, audible warning comes out, which is really cool because if you are having to fall, be falling asleep at the wheel, you may not feel that gentle nudge, but then, you know, of course the alert is gonna wake you up. Controlled and, and the, the suspension on it, it's got a lot of good travel and it's very soft and comfortable. You, you, you have the feeling of sitting up a little higher than you do in a yeah, compact do. car, do. Yep. as opposed to, uh, more, more SUV-ish. This right. is not all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive or anything like that, but you do get a little increased uh, height in your seats when you're sitting in here as compared to a, a small compact car. I like all the information displayed in the middle here. It's yep. really nice and clear. And I love that digital speedometer because you know, people, you, once you ever try it, you get used to having the digital readout telling you the speed instead of looking at the gauge and the needle. It's so nice to have. Yeah, they, it, they sort of packaged this with all the right features. And, and the S is only the second right. level up out of, in the out trim of six. level. six. This out is number six. two. Yeah, so this there's is four levels two. above that add a whole lot more um, So that, that, that's, uh, pretty, that's pretty nice. 20,290. Yeah, for all those features. A nice peppy engine, comfortable interior. Lots of safety features. Yeah, great little car. Well, we're almost at the end of our ride. And uh, as always, I want to invite you to please subscribe to our channel yes. and hit that little bell up there so you don't miss any of our future reviews. And we've got a lot of them coming nice. still. But uh, make sure you like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, Tumblr, Pinterest, uh, Twitter, uh, you name it. We're out there on social media. We're everywhere. Um, and again, you know, please subscribe to our channel. And until, uh, you know, keep watching. That's all we can say, and we appreciate you watching this video. And don't forget to take a ride. That's right. Let's go for a ride. Let's try this out. Drill! <laughs> oh, it's cold out. Oh, gee, I never can get in fast enough to take off and leave Nathan. <laughs> I'll have to plan that one day so I can put the GoPro on the outside and we can all wave to him collectively as we leave him behind. Touchy. Oh, I like the tilt telescoping wheel. There we yeah. go. Ooh, I like that. Don't take the steering wheel off. Well, yeah. <laughs> it takes the whole wheel off. Look, I like this tilting and telescoping wheel. That, because uh, you did turn it, it. So when you turn the signal on, it negates yeah. that. Okay. Most people that use our signals don't have this issue. <laughs> Rob says he only turns his blinkers on at Christmas. Well, you used to fuss at me because I would turn them on and leave them on. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was nice. You know, one week they'd all, I'd be on all left side, and then the following week I would change and I'd just turn on the right side <laughs> the and right leave side it on. Called, yeah.